What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Center for Stingray Biology. I know I've been MIA for a couple of weeks now, but that's because we've been really busy. Uh, a lot of shipments coming in and out and uh, running the holiday sales. So we've just been working hard, making sure that we have enough fish in stock for you guys. Today, we're gonna give you a little glimpse of some of the fish that came in this past weekend. Now, not everything is here, only some of the stuff is here. As you know, all the stuff is now at Predatory Fins, so you should keep an eye out for his video. It should be coming out within the next day or so. But the stuff that we have here is uh, some of the stuff that he can't keep over there, which are, I'll let you guys know, the electric eel and the uh, Goliath African tiger fish. So that's something that you need to look forward to in this video. I'll show that to you in a brief moment. And uh, you know, some of the other stuff where we bought a lot of, and uh, we're just stocking it at both places right now. I will show you that. Those are the albino silver arowanas. You won't want to miss out on these particular ones because these are the special ones. These are the ones that are really nicely colored, all right? We'll get to that in a little bit. Here we go. Let me show you. We got the African tigers. Let me come around to this side and show you guys, all right? I don't have the lights on, so there's a little bit of a glare, okay? They came in very nice, very healthy, good shape, not skinny at all. Let me see if I can turn on the light here. All right, that's much, much better. All right, so they're a good size. I think they're probably like almost four inches, maybe some a four and a half. But as you can see, very healthy schooling or scared of the light or scared of the camera. But you see, they're not skinny at all. Very good shape. All right. Um, let's see. I have some of these little Bulgarian greens here, and um, uh, we have them for sale on the website at predatoryfins.com. But I. I particularly like these angels myself, so um, I pulled them out, you know, just to keep some for fun. Um, as you guys know, I'm primarily a stingray guy, right? So it's been quite some time since I actually kept other types of fish for myself. And I have to say, it's kind of broken the monotony of just keeping stingrays. So this is kind of fun. Learning about new fish and dealing with new fish and their different requirements has kind of brought a little new light in my life, so to speak. And let me show you here on this other side, we got a bunch of these albino silver arowans. Let me click on this light over here. I bought this light just so that we can show the fish better because I don't have any lighting down here, as you guys can see. So what's so different about these? This is the type that gets yellow and they have the pinkish eye. These are much more colorful than your typical uh, albino silver. You can see that, right? Once it's under the light, you can see that yellowness. And typically when people buy albino, that's what they're looking for. But not every batch comes in like this. See, I got more over here. Very beautiful very very good size you know sometimes starting off with really really tiny silver arowanas can be challenging in regards of uh, getting them to feed when they're a bigger size and trained they do so much better so really beautiful group here look at that color on these things all right so now i'm going to carry my trusty light oh you know what i might as well show you guys the p14s over here doing very nicely growing I don't know when the last time I showed you guys these things, but as you can see now, it's been a couple of months and the juvenile pattern has kind of faded out and now you're starting to see what their more adult pattern looks like. And as I told you, that turtle shell brownish pattern will fade away and then you start to see all the spotting. Let's see, let's come around to this side. So here, we got more right here as same thing. Now you see the one back there? I don't know if you can really tell but he still has that faint turtle shell pattern, or maybe this one right here, you can see it. But it will slowly fade away and become black. Uh, let's come around to this side now. We got more bumblebee groupers in. Okay, they're a little bit shy, but they're doing very well. Majority of them are at predatory fins right now as we speak. These were just held back here because they were pre-ordered by some customers. So just to help them save some money on some shipping back and forth, I did hold back uh, a couple for them. So that's the bumblebees 
That guy's just perched up there and chilling, having a good time. But uh, I've never kept these fish before either, and I do see the appeal of them. They're very curious. When they see you, they peek their heads out and they want to look. If they get spooked, you see that? They just turn around and run back out. Maybe this light is a little bit too bright, but yeah, just earlier, they were all at the top of the water trying to take a peek at the, to see. Look, see, I shut off the light. Now that guy comes out. Let's see, if I sit still, he might slowly start coming out. Let's see. All right, come on, buddy. I'm right here. But they were fed already, so maybe they won't come. Oh, look, look, look. See, he's coming. He's coming. Okay, anyways, let's forget about you. And, um, all right, we got some uh, electric eels here. They've been here for a little bit of time, and they're doing very, very well, very active. I have to say, I am really, really enjoying uh, keeping these eels. Now, I had a bigger one uh, in in this tank for, of the bumblebee groupers just the other day. I, I sold it. I was going to keep that one as a pet, but then I, I, I had to let it go because I needed the tank space for the groupers, and I figured I had all these other guys. It's been really fun keeping the electric eel. There's this uh, appeal or an excitement about it, you know, electric eel, ooh. And of course, the, the, the danger factor. And, and I've been trying to learn a lot about these eels. Now, the only way to really learn is through experience, right? Number one thing is, you know, everyone's thinking, and me included, are thinking, you know what? Electric eels might be dangerous, you know, I don't want to keep them, and I can't keep them with other fish. And I'm thinking, well, you know, these things coming out of the Amazon, they do have to coexist with other fish, right? Now it's just about understanding the fish and their personalities and what might trigger their defense mechanisms, right? Just as in stingrays. When you hear stingrays, ooh, you hear about, you think about Steve Irwin getting stung, oh, should I be keeping these fish? But hey, you know what? I've been keeping these fish for so long, and... Maybe I've been stung once in my entire life. And it all comes down to understanding the animal, right? And then the same thing. For people who don't know anything about stingrays, they might be thinking, oh, can I keep them together? Are they going to sting each other? Can I keep them with other fish? Are they going to sting the other fish? So, I mean, now, granted, I don't have many other fish. But here, you know, I got my datnoid here, who's been in this tank forever with these guys. And I've, in the beginning, I too was afraid that the datnoid might get stung by the stingrays but so far it's been okay you know but sometimes accidents do happen and i have seen that happen before right but the really the key is is anyone bothering the stingrays or provoking them to attack so i started thinking hey with the electric eels it's got to be similar where where they really do have to be provoked and with the little bit of research that i did before they do uh, have different stun levels and they use their electricity for different reasons one is for sensory like radar to sense what's around them another one is for getting their prey you know if they need the food they stun their animals so that it's easier for them to catch and the other one is a defense mechanism where they release uh, the mother load of, of their jolt and and try to uh, shock their enemies in a defense. What I've been doing, and unfortunately I wasn't able to show you guys, I was going to make the episode uh, sooner and show you, but I already sold the larger eel, but I had the larger eel with a Kelberry peacock bass. The eel was maybe like 18 inches and doing very well. I, I've showed you guys that fish before. Uh, what I didn't show you was I threw in a Kelberry peacock bass from one of our last imports and they did fine. They lived fine. They coexisted. No problems. I never saw the eel attack the Calberry at all. I have seen sometimes if the Calberry gets too close that he like twitched a little funny but then swam away and everything was fine, right? So maybe the eel was like, sense, like releasing some voltage saying, hey, stay away. I think there is a fine medium that these animals can coexist together. Now with yesterday's import, what I did was I had a bunch of these little plecos, right? These short body albino sailfin plecos and I needed something to clean that tank. So just for the fun of it, I threw the pleco into that tank with the little uh, eels. And again, I thought maybe now the tank is so crowded with all those eels that they don't have the space and then they might start shocking the pleco, right? But really, the eels are schooled up right there and the pleco is right there. 
and they don't bother each other at all. Now, um, when, when I did my water changes, okay, and the water level went down and the eels were all scattered everywhere, they were running into the pleco. I was like, okay, now it's gonna happen. They're gonna shock the crap out of him. But they didn't, okay? If anything, they were more afraid of him. Uh, when they came near him, I watched it, they swam right in front of him and then turned away. Okay, in some cases, I did see the catfish, uh, or I did see the pleco twitch a little bit. So, you know, some in some cases, maybe certain eels did release a little bit of voltage on them. Okay, and what I also learned was when the, the body of the eel or the tail section was touching the pleco, no problem, right? But it was more towards the head area of the eel when it touched the pleco that you see maybe uh, some, some weird behavior. It's my belief that the voltage is coming from the head area. So now I have this little red and white candy cane parrot here and I need space for it because that guy was in the tank with all those albino silver arowanas. Today, this guy, he, he just attacked one of my albino silvers and injured it pretty badly. So I figured, okay, let me take this guy out. Now, I don't know where to put him. So I figured, hey, you know what? Now, let me continue with my experiment. I want to throw it into that tank of little electric eels. And I, wanted, I want us to all view the initial response of what's gonna happen in this tank together, okay? So, here we go, guys. The moment of truth. Now, I did a water change earlier, and that's why I knew uh, the response of, of the Pleco. So now, you see, I removed the cover. The eels are moving around a little bit more. Okay, so let's see here. I'm gonna grab this guy with my hand. Here we go, beautiful fish. Um, I had been keeping this guy around just to cycle the tanks when the tanks are empty. Okay, here we go, guys. Let's see. We're gonna see what the initial response is. And you know, better yet, I think I wanna throw him in on this side where the eels are. Okay, now see what happens. We're all gonna witness this together. Look at that. Nobody's attacking anybody. Nobody's bothering anybody. But let's see if the eels touch him or, or if he touches the eel because obviously they don't know each other and they don't know how to behave around each other. But so far, we're all good. And this pleco, or not the pleco, the parrotfish is just swimming around. Okay, now let's see if I can provoke some, oh, let's see, he's swimming into the crowd. Nothing. All right, let me go grab, where's my lights? Let's see. Oh, here it is. And let's put some light on the situation. Okay, now the eels are spreading out. Right? They're not schooling. And let's see what happens now. Still nothing. Oh, you see that? There was a little twitch right there. Oh, there was a little twitch right there. So, I think it's just they have to learn to respect each other and get along with each other. And uh, we saw this same behavior when I threw in the, the Kelberry before with the bigger one. And yes, when they don't know and they touch the eel, they get a little bit of a shock. But it's nothing that's going to kill your animal. If your fish just doesn't learn, right, and keeps going towards the eels then yeah, they're gonna keep getting shocked, but I don't think it's anything that will kill your animals. Now you see, let's see here. Oh, you see that? He swam away. He sensed them, he probably sensed some, some stray voltage. All right, so basically, this is what I wanted to show you, and they're gonna have to learn to get along. Now, ideally, well not ideally, but in a situation like this where there's so many eels, it's probably hard for them to define their own space, right? Uh, but for you guys at home, I don't think you guys are gonna have a swarm of eels like that, right? So probably just maybe one or two. So there's plenty of space where they're not gonna run into each other so often, okay? But you see now, they're kind of just like spaced out. What are we learning from this? We're learning that they can coexist. 
And that's what we want to take away from this episode. And that's kind of what I've been trying to prove. Um, because I do see that there are a lot of people interested in these eels, but they are afraid. They're thinking they can't keep it with their fish. Now, maybe what I'll do, we'll see what happens here first. I'm even tempted to take one of these larger eels and move it up here with these African tigers, okay? And I think it will be fine. Quite honestly, I really, really think it will be fine. If anything, how about this? Why don't I just do it right now for you guys as well? You know, since we're doing this episode and we're learning about these eels, um, let me try to catch one right now. And I will throw it in there. And I will try to catch a bigger one. Let's see, this guy, yeah. This is a good size one. This, uh, oh, see? His belly's nice and full. I fed it earlier. I would say this guy's about eight and a half inches. Okay, so there we are. Let me, this, I got this cover open. And let me throw this eel in here. All right. So let's see what happens here. In a situation like this, I really don't think much is gonna happen. I think the African tigers are a schooling fish that don't really hang around the bottom. They're not really gonna interact with each other so much. See, the eel immediately took refuge. And I believe they will get along just fine. If anything, you know, we wanna keep the eel well fed so that he's not gonna be hunting for prey. If anything, maybe what might happen is when these tigerfish act erratic and run into the eel, they might get a jolt. But other than that, I think they will be fine. So, you know what? I will keep you guys updated. And so for all you guys at home who were interested or who are interested in keeping these fantastic animals, I highly recommend that you go for it because uh, in my opinion, of all the, the new fish that I've been keeping uh, over these past couple of months, I think the electric eel might be my next favorite fish, all right? Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have learned something here and I'm just sharing all my experiences with you. I will do my best to upload a little bit more consistently. I appreciate everyone's support. So stay safe everybody and always like, share and subscribe. Thank you guys.